So this is my 11th year of teaching and hands down by far the most significant change in students in that time has been the dramatic uptick of clinical levels of anxiety mm. and depression. It's, it's, not, it's not a mere perception mm. um, and it's also not just students get a little, get, getting a little more twitchy or high strung. Uh, there is some of that, but there are also, um, I mean, levels of major anxiety and depression yeah. that yeah. becomes debilitating for people. Um, obviously, there's a lot of that stuff. I mean, it's, you're not going to read some great books and all of a sudden it's going to go away. But can we talk a little bit about uh, the way that uh, reading great books might uh, help uh, mm -hmm. students who are coping with anxiety and depression? Yeah. I mean, one of the first things I want to acknowledge is this won't do, it won't do everything. It's not a, what's the thing that will fix this? Oh, the great books. <laughs> uh, so these are complex things. It's coming from, it has to do with biology, chemistry, family, all, all, all sorts of things are figuring into this for the students in different ways depending on who they are. Mm. But one of the things that the great books really have to offer is a sense of restoring order to the soul in a range of different ways because uh, the soul is, is, is kind of the, the lifeblood of what we do it, mm. it, and it, it, having it ordered bring such health to us as persons. Uh, so these books, so many of them take us richly and deeply into that and I find that to be an immense, an immense resource, mm. uh, just in a, in a very general way. Yeah, yeah one of the books that, that we, we read early on, earlier on in the Morgan House, um, the Boethius is Constellation of Philosophy. Yeah. Mm. It begins with someone who, who is just distraught. The only thing they can do is write emo music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. I mean, he, and legitimately so. He's yeah. lost everything yeah. that, that he's ever worked for uh, and he's facing death. So he's, he's got pretty good cause to be pretty down. Um, and he's basically writing sad songs all about it. And, and one of the, I like the way that that text starts by both taking seriously the real grief mm. that mm -hmm. he's suffering and, and its depth. He, 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 he talks about his, his eyes uh, kind of being down, being cast down, and only able to contemplate the dust um, in these poems. But it also gives you a way of thinking, like, no, that there's something, it, when you're in it, it feels permanent, it feels inescapable. Mm -hmm. But Lady Philosophy comes up and, show, and, and starts to sort of say things like, well, you, you're acting like this is all there is, but you're mm -hmm. actually, this is a short-sighted view of who you really are, of what kind of person a human being is. You, you've, you've forgotten crucial things about yourself, and even though you believe in God's good order of yeah. the world, you, you don't, you've lost sight of how that can work out. So she basically proposes cognitive therapy mm -hmm. for him, and it works. <laughs> yeah, and it's cognitive therapy because he's sick, and his sickness is a matter of the soul not understanding itself. Yes. Leading to all sorts of disorders and ills and pains. Yeah, in, in regarding the world and what he yeah. needs, it, it, he doesn't. But she doesn't just say, "Don't worry, God's in charge. Everything's going to be fine." Right. Like, she really yeah. recognizes that that would be bad medicine. Right. And it, she she starts off with gentler medicine. She really steps him through. So one of the great things about that book, and that is a book that I have used in my life when deeply mm -hmm. distressed. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's a book that whose teachings have called me away from thinking that I'm merely subject to fortune's vagaries, mm -hmm. whether they're the fortunes of the body or the fortunes of earthly goods. It's one that I keep coming back to. And partly it's because she doesn't just try to like solve it and whack you down with like, this is the way it really is, so still suck it up. Mm -hmm. She she is forceful, yeah. but she brings you along through 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 pulling out what do you really think is going yeah. on here? Like well, are you aren't you just assuming this, that or the other thing? And and Ha instead of having those assumptions remain invisible and therefore feeling the burden of them without being able to know what they are, what to do with them, yeah. she draws them out like a good doctor. Yeah. And it, it, it makes a difference that that's conceived dramatically. Yeah. Um, so that's something that's, that's so difficult for a person to do for themselves. Mm. So I, I've experienced actually quite a bit of clinical anxiety um, and uh, I have thought harder about my own internal problems than anyone I know uh, and I can guarantee you, I can tell you with all confidence that you're not going to think your way through mm. anxiety or depression. And so to have this dramatically personified in philosophy is so significant. I, I've been yeah. helped so much by Luther because what Luther does is he's a really consistent program that mm -hmm. is perfect for things like anxiety. He mm. says, well, the center is curved inward. Mm. Um, and if you're curved inward, 
you need to be drawn out. Hmm. Um, and for him, uh, the great thing about the gospel yeah. is the gospel was something outside of him. So he would talk about things like alien righteousness. Um, he would talk about this alien word that comes to us. Hmm. He says, you know, the great thing about the sacraments is that, that what happens in the sacraments is someone else tells you that the good news of Jesus is for you. Um, and I don't know how many times a student, I've had a student saying, yeah, yeah, I mean, I know this stuff is true, but you know, you don't know me. And, um, and sometimes taking a, a hint from Luther, I will look at them and, and halfway in jest, I'll say, it's okay if you want to disrespect me, but I have a PhD and I'm ordained and I make good money to do this work. So if you want to uh, say in the face of Biola University and the evangelical church, uh, and the Lord Jesus himself who's called me to ministry that the things I'm telling you about the love of God for you and the mercy of God for you aren't true. You can do that, mm. but, but you would be standing in the face of all those things. And, and the reason I do it is because we get so curved inward uh, in, in mental illness that hearing good news is incredibly hard. And so it needs to be spoken by another and we need to be cajoled almost out of ourselves at times. That makes me wonder what the benefit, maybe you have something to say about this too, like what, what was the benefit of reading about someone else? So in Boethius, you get, you mm, get, you get the nice. doctor fixes right there, but we yeah. read other books where the fix is not on offer or it's far away and too long coming. Yeah, mm. Mm. there's something about anxiety or, or depression where it feels so alone, so unique, so the the only way that reality is that that cuts off and isolates that you see that so clearly in in the character of despair in Fairy Queen. Mm. Uh, you see that in the way that Anna Karenina uh, in the story by that name kind of is moving a w further and further from society and more and more depending on her lover or husband um, and Vronsky, but then hating him as a pre the, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and 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 so many of the resources within these great books say no. We're not alone. The commonality outweighs mm, yeah. the, the, the isolation. The, the way that Christ represents us mm. and that we are united in Christ overcomes those, those boundaries or those borders um, that says, you are not alone in this. And that begins to break down some of those, mm. those beliefs, some of the power. Mm. It breaks, the, it breaks a thing. spell, I think. I mean, because yeah. mm. I think, Adam, I think you're so spell. right that, that the spell trades on the knowledge that it is in a really perverted way that I am special, mm. that only I have experienced the yeah. depth of <clears throat> despair like this. And when you start to see, oh my gosh, no, yeah. you, all you are is a type. You're, you're this emo kid or you're, you know, <laughs> really, you're telling me that you're in despair because you got dumped. Oh yeah, that's that, not, not that unique. There's a weird way in which that can be surprisingly therapeutic. Yeah. It's curious because it, 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 both of those things are true. Like there's a way in which that I'm utterly irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. I am utterly yeah, special right. and whatever right. griefs are mine are mine and mine alone. But on the other hand, I'm not, not a human being yeah. and all griefs are human griefs. Yeah. So that there, there is this shared quality. So maybe, maybe another way the great books like engaging with them can help is that it delivers to you human things, mm -hmm. human experiences. Yeah. Um, and that it, it, it breaks up the isolation, not by convincing you that, that you're nobody or that you're just a type, but that you're, you're, you're experiencing what is common to man, even though it is ineluctably, irreducibly also yours. Mm -hmm. So it gives you both at the same time. You get, so in the Anna Karenina, right, or in the, the, the picture of, of despair in the Fairy Queen, you get these incredibly compelling pictures of inner yeah. life, writ, writ, writ large. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And Anna's life is not my life, mm -hmm. but it's a human life. Yeah. And as, that those human aspects that draw us together, um, I, I can learn from, I can see, and that can cut, can cut some of the isolation mm -hmm. as well. That's good. Thanks. The Tory Honors Institute at Biola University. Biblically centered, great books, liberal education. More at biola.edu slash Tory.